Well, welcome to a quickie little video. Today we're talking about NBN, fiber to the premises specifically. This is something I had put on a little while ago and people keep asking questions about it. So, on the outside of my house, fiber optic cable comes in, it joins here and goes into the house. I'm going to explain a few things about how this worked and all the intricacies of it. Now, from the start, my fiber optic cable starts at this pole. There is a uh, pit at the base there, runs up in that black tube and it runs all the way along, all the way over the top up here, till we get to another power pole, and then it comes into my property along that way. Bit difficult to do at high zoom. It sneaks in here, down a piece of cable, or a piece of conduit, pops in right under the corner there, runs along and back up into here. This is not necessarily a typical installation, and wherever you leave it may not be coming down the power poles, it might be coming underground or a whole bunch of different ways. And my best bud, the Magpie Lark, has decided to come and help us film the video. How are you going this morning? I don't have a handful of cheese today though. And in the case, you're going to keep the bugs and the spiders off things. Now, to explain how I got fibre to the premises, we applied for the zero dollar upgrade, which uh, once fibre is available in your area, some playhouses are eligible for a zero dollar upgrade, which means when you change with your service provider to a uh, fiber to the premises plan, they will come and do the upgrade and the connection at no cost. Ignore my messy desk here or the bin. Now, the other side of this, there is an NTD, a network termination device that goes in under here. Basically, this is just like the other end of a Cat5 cable. There's no smarts going on in here. It's just you need one of these at either end of a piece of fiber optic cable to be able to transfer network through it. This is part of the install. The fancy pants little box there is a battery backup device that I made that is not strictly two code, something many people have reminded me about in the comments. I have several of these boards that I designed myself for running things. For instance, if we turn off the main power, it switches the main router over to battery. Now, to make use of the internet from that NTD, you need a router. Often, modems are combined with a router, hence a modem router. Now, this is an old modem router we had kicking around. Uh, it's an old Optus one. And you can see here, this if you were using fiber, you'd plug straight into this. So you can use the router side of this without using all the phone side of things. But typically, a router has none of, none of the phone sections and only these bits. We'll show you in a moment. This is another messy side of my desk. It's important to note that you can't just plug a computer straight into the NTD. It needs a different protocol. So, in order to make use of it, this one here goes down into the NTD, into one of the ports, usually the second one. The rest of these go off to the rest of my network. That goes to my printer, and that is backup power. All of this is hanging off that lead there. This is just a switch to give me additional ports on the network. Now, because my neighbours are on an extreme budget, I share internet with them, and uh, we trade favours accordingly. So, one of these goes next door, one of these goes to the shed, and then across to my neighbour's place. So we have two neighbours, and fibre is enough to share with all three of them and not notice the difference. Now, I'm paying for the low end of the speed here, and we've got two other people using it at the same time, but we're still looking at about 270 megasecond downloads. Uploads range up to about 40 megabits on this plan. I can pay for a gigabit. But the problem we have with this is that uh, my network was only capable of 100 megabit. Now, for those of you who are computer experts, this might be obvious, but some of you aren't. There are different internet speeds and different network speeds. If you're getting more than 100 megabit coming in, make sure that your router is actually using gigabit ethernet across your house because you may not actually be able to use any more than 100 megabit of that unless you upgrade your hardware. This is a gigabit switch. This has a total throughput of about one and a half gigabit. That's important, especially if you're running multiple people. My old modem was had gigabit ports, but it was only capable of 300 megabit throughput total. So that made it a bit difficult. I couldn't make use of all of that internet. So we'll come outside to look at the uh, technological scenery here with all the extra tires that I have floating in my yard. Now, something to explain about network shortfalls. There is an asterisk in here, which as usual with me, when I order something, the asterisk usually applies. In this case, 
there was a network shortfall, the, there wasn't actually any fibre in the pit. Despite the fact that my neighbour over here had fibre already and the pit was just around the corner, they wanted to use the one up here. I'm not entirely sure why. I had to wait about a month or so for them to actually run fibre in the pit and then come back and run the cable over. After that, I then had to wait again. You know, even though the fibre was connected here and I had an NTD, I had to wait for somebody at the other end of that fibre up the cable to commission things, which would have been back at the exchange or wherever the nearest fibre node is. I negotiated that through my internet provider. But that was pretty much it. Once it was on, it all started working. My router had detected the connection and already started thing, set things up. So we were doing very well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Also, with lightning and thunder and everything like that, we haven't had a single dropout. The only dropout we had is when half a million people lost power in the state. And that was probably understandable because somewhere else along the lines we'd lost power. Here though, because of the battery backups, things continued running normally. And our dropout lasted of about three minutes, which I think was a very good effort. But in any case, I hope it's been interesting and informative to you. People have been asking about NBN uh, fibre to the premises. And I'm very happy with it. This is what we should have had all along. And they cheaped out and went fibre to the node. Which was not a great idea.